once an access point boots and gets an IP address if this covers controllers. It has a few ways of doing that. One of the ways is to send a discovery message to the broadcast IP address of the local subnet in which the access point got its IP address. Another way is to use over the approvisioning access point. You may have heard of this feature OTAP. It's a feature by which the access point listens to the air and listens to RRM neighbor messages sent from the other access points in which it can find information about the controller to which the access points are connected. The other access points from which to receive these messages, of course. Um, the OTAP is a bit of a complex mechanism, so we have a dedicated video uh, for OTAP. The access point can also remember IP addresses of controllers to which it was previously connected in its previous life. Um, each access point has um, some slots available in which it stores information about controllers to which it was previously connected. You can clear the configuration of the access point, clear everything, but you will not remove this information. Which means that if an access point connects once to a controller, the access point is going to remember, remember the IP address of this controller. And among the attempts, it's going to try to unicast a message to this IP address. This is a good thing, right? Because our aim here is to try to gather as many controller information as we possibly can to be able to get to a controller in the most efficient manner. It can be a little bit surprising, though, when you get an access point from your lab or from a client and you don't know exactly to which control it was connected before, you suddenly see an access point trying to send unicast IP addresses, messages to an IP address you don't know about. Well, that's because of this feature. The access point can also get an IP address um, from a DHCP server. That's what is called the option 43. Option 43 actually is just a generic term that means that the access point gets vendor-specific information from a DHCP server. So vendor-specific information could be any type of information about anything. In our case, of course, the vendor-specific option we send is a controller management IP address. The, the HTTP option 43 is a bit of a complex mechanism too, so we have a dedicated video uh, for this mechanism. The access point can also get information from a DNS server. So that means that the access point needs to know a DNS server. So it may have gotten information about DNS server from a DHCP server, that's option number six. So if it knows about a DNS server, it's going to try to resolve the name Cisco-LWAP-Controller. And if you run 5.2 code, it will try to resolve both Cisco-LWAP-Controller and Cisco-CAPWAP-Controller. The access point is going to try all these methods, one after the other. Regardless of what the results of this local broadcast might be, the access point is going to try OTAP. Regardless of the information it may or may not get through OTAP, it's going to try to look at its local database, and it's trying to look at option 43 if it has any chance of doing it. It's going to try to resolve a DNS Cisco lwap control name. And if it doesn't find any DNS server, it's even going to try to resolve using 255.255.255 as the DNS server IP address. In other words, the access point at this stage is trying to get as many information as it can about all the possible controllers it can hear of, so that it can find which one is the primary, which one is the secondary, tertiary, which one is the master, or which one is the least loaded. So it's going to try all these possible methods. Okay, let's have a look at a real network, see how these things work. Here, I have a controller on which one access point 10, 10, 51, or 102 um, joined a few, a few minutes ago. As you can see here, I have no primary controller name, I have no secondary nor tertiary controllers. Actually, this access point was cleared. I cleared its configuration. I'm running here 42130. Um, it would be the same probably with most of the releases up to 6.0. All right, so I connected here on the um, access point port and I sniffed the connection just to see what was going to happen. And you see, the first thing the access point does, of course, is to get an IP address. This is a 1250 access point, so it's a layer 3 only access point. So it gets an IP address. As soon as it has an IP address, it tries to resolve cisco lwap controller As you can see here, the DNS IP address is 255.255.255.255. Hey, wait a minute. What does it do, cisco-lwap-controller.cisco.com? Well, could be because my DHCP server is returning a domain name option along with the uh, IP address. As you know, in your, DN in your DHCP scope, you can return several options. One of them is option 15, which is domain name. 
So if you return an option 15 domain name to your access point, the access point is going to uh, remember that it has to find all hosts within this domain name. So if your domain name is cisco.com, it's going to resolve everything within cisco.com, such as cisco web controller within cisco.com. Here I have a syslog configured on the access point. I did that so that I could get some information about the access point trying different methods and I, so that I could show you. So you see controller address is and there is a 10 one something that appears at the end of the line here. And you can also see did not get any log server information, did not get any DNS option information. Keep that in mind, I will show you that from the access point CLI in a minute. So the XPON tries several methods, tries to get an IP address, tries to get information for the DHCP server, and then of course try, tries to get to the uh, controller it has an information from. From here, in my DHCP scope, I'm sending an information for 10.1.1.10. So suddenly the XPON knows that there is a controller which IP address is 10.1.1.10. It also tries, as you can see here, to broadcast the discovery to the local subnet. So it tries all the possible methods. But of course, the local subnet doesn't answer, but the controller 10.1.1.10 answers. And it says, you know what? There is an AP manager IP address listening at 10.1.1.11. So this is why suddenly the access point says, OK, so therefore I can join this controller using the AP manager IP address 10.1.1.11. And it does that join request. And of course, it gets a join reply. And as soon as it joins this configuration, this controller, it gets a configure request and response by which, as you can see here, the XPON is going to get its configuration from the controller. All right, so that's the Wireshark. I was connected to the access point um, connection to the switch, local port, and sniffing the traffic. If I jump to here, which is the access point itself, as you can see here, the access point boots up then gets here an IP address from a DHCP server and gets a controller IP address. That's the syslog information you saw in the other screen. Didn't get any log server information and no DNS information from DHCP, but it has a log server information from elsewhere. Okay, so that's the syslog information IP address and you see it tries to join this controller and that's why you see all this process by which the access point uh, gets um, um, its radio state to up because it gets configured from the controller. So you see if you only sniff from the access point CLI, you don't see much. You see whether the access point got an IP address uh, for a controller from the DHCP server or not, but you do not see all these attempts that the XPON is, is doing on, on the background. That's something you can only get from, from the uh, switch port to which the XPON is connected. Um, just for sanity check, let me show you my configuration on, on my switch here. If I say show run, my access point is in VLAN 51, for which I have a, a DHCP pool which is called pod1, by which I'm providing the IP address here, which is in X format. So you may see that 0A, 01, 01, 0A, 0A is 10 in X. 01 is 1, of course, 01 is 1, and 0A is 10, so that's 10.1.1.10. I'm providing this IP address back to the, uh, to the access point. So again, if you don't understand how these things work, um, look at the video about DHCP option 43. And that's, of course, my controller IP address. If you go here to controller interfaces, you can see that management IP address is 10.1.10, and the access point IP manager IP address is 10.1.11. So that's how it works. Uh, two things I would like you to keep in mind. First, the access point is going to try all these possible methods so that it can gather as many uh, control IP address as it possibly can. That's the first thing. Second thing, the locally stored IP addresses are not cleanable. You cannot clear this information, which means that if your access point is uh, reset to factory default, which you can do from the access from the controller web interface or CLI by you know clicking that button at the bottom of the access point here, clear all config. Even though you click that button, it's not going to remove the database, local database about controllers. And that's a feature. We want to have this feature so that the XPON can uh, find a controller as fast as it possibly can. Once the XPON has gathered all this information, it's going to try to join the best candidate, the best controller, and it's going to uh, finally get its configuration from this controller. I hope this was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.